when you think of a white nationalist, you think of a racist. But is that really fair? Is the agenda to promote white rights and white prosperity any different from a black person or an Hispanic person doing the same thing? This very controversial issue, an issue that I have opposing views on, is the topic of today's Angel Dodger. I've spent my life pushing myself to be the strongest, and now I learn there's a power level I'll never reach on my own. And I hate that. In today's episode, I'm joined by William Daniel Johnson, who is the chairman of the American Freedom Party. Thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me on. Um, so from what I gather about the American Freedom Party, it is a white nationalist group. Um, and I just wanted to ask you, what exactly does your group do and what is, how does it go about doing it? Okay. Well, we are a nationalist group. I'm a white nationalist, but we have other members of other races that are participating with us. So I, I think maybe the broader term of a nationalist group as opposed to a globalist group, which is the establishment, the, the Hillary Clinton globalists or the Mitt Romney globalists, we're countering that. Um, we, we want to promote nationalism. And in my case, white nationalism, promote the, uh, promote the interests of the, of the white race. Um, but then I work a lot with black nationalists and, and people of, uh, of other races as well. Okay. Do you feel as though there's like somewhat of a um, stigma uh, associated with being somebody who tries to promote white rights? That's a very good question. That is exactly what we feel. Um, there's a, a cartoon that goes around on the Internet a little bit. It says that... Um, um, I'm proud to be an African-American, said the black man. Um, I'm proud to be an Asian-American, said the Chinese. I'm proud to be white, says the racist. And so, yeah, there, there is a lot of, of bad things um, attacking white people who want to stand up for their culture and heritage. Okay. Um, and what exactly, what, what makes you feel as though it's necessary to promote white rights? What, what is being taken away from white people um, in this day and age? Well, if you just take a look at every white country around the world, uh, the founding stock is being displaced, um, partially by pressures from outside and from pressures from inside. The white people aren't having kids anymore, for one thing. And then there's massive immigration flooding every white country. And uh, the, the, the result is that is that the white race will cease to exist unless we do something to reverse this trend. And that is the most cataclysmic development, but it is truly one that will occur. Okay. Um, so on the other side, the Black Lives Matter movement, um, given what's been happening in recent uh, years, do you feel as though it's okay for, you know, black people to have a movement like that? Do you feel like the, as though it's necessary or is it an extremist movement? Well, I think it's an extremist movement but I feel more affinity to them who want dramatic change than I do with the various integrationists and the people that promote consumerism and globalism. So even though I, I couldn't go uh, walk in their midst without fear of getting beaten up, I still have uh, positive feelings towards them because they want dramatic change, just like I want dramatic change, and their approach may be extreme and it may be hostile to me, I can understand their feelings. Um, moving on to the uh, presidential election, I know that this uh, election has had deep racial ties, um, like a lot of racial tension uh, with it, particularly with Donald Trump. Now, I'm, I think you may or may not have been a delegate for him. I'm not sure about that. But um, what is your view for Donald Trump? Is that somebody that you think represents uh, what this country needs? Does it, is he promoting the um, white rights or is he just somebody that, like, what, what's, your, what's your take on him? Okay, first of all, let me clarify my position. I was a Trump delegate in good standing for four hours. Okay. After, they, after they found out who I was, then they, they kicked me off immediately. Um, but yes, I am a big supporter of Donald Trump for a variety of ways, reasons. And of course, I understand his, um, uh, his faults, and uh, I overlook them. I think that he is bringing a new, fresh approach to the nation that we haven't seen in 50 years. And that is something that I can embrace. Um, we have 
uh, the establishment, which I think some people have called uh, different wings of the same bird of prey, being the Republicans and the Democrats. They both have been promoting globalism, consumerism. Um, they would they would strip mine Yellowstone if it make them a profit. They export jobs overseas and they bring in cheap labor, all for corporate profits and all to increase the shareholder profits and the and the captains of industry getting more money. And Donald Trump is um, bringing to the forefront, populism and nationalism, which we haven't seen in my since I was a little tiny kid, and that I approve of. In the 1980s, there was something called the Pace Amendment. And the Pace Amendment, well, you'll get the idea when I read the quote. Um, no person shall be a citizen of the United States unless a non-Hispanic white of the European race and whom there is no ascertainable trace of Negro blood, nor more than one eighth Mongolian, Asia, Asian, Asia Minor, Middle Eastern, Semitic, Near Eastern, American Indian, Malay, or other non-European and non-white blood, provided that Hispanic whites defined as anyone with an Hispanic ancestor may be citizens if, in addition to the meeting, they aforesaid ascertainable trace and percentage tests, they are in an appearance indistinguishable from Americans whose ancestral home is in the British Isles or Northwestern Europe, only citizens shall have the right and privilege to reside permanently in the United States. This was an amendment that was supposed to be, um, or like it was, it was pushed as something that should be amendment to, uh, an amendment to the Constitution, I think the 13th and 14th, if I'm not mistaken. And apparently that quote is associated with you. One, I wanted to find out if that's true. And if yes or no, is that, how should somebody like me interpret that quote? Uh, yes. I wrote that when I was in my 20s, um, in, the, in the early 80s. Um, I, at that time, I could see that America was going to, the founding stock was going to be displaced, and I wanted to create a separate white ethno state. And at that time, I thought the way to do it was to repatriate all of the non-whites. The blacks go back to Africa, and, and the uh, Hispanics go back to Latin America, and, and so forth. Um, I think now, now that 30 some years have passed, it's no longer practical. But the concept of that there should be a separate white ethno state is, I think, a good one and a valid one. And that's something that I still support. I mean, if you take, if I were to go to China, it's, it's made up of Chinese. If I were to go to Japan, it's made up of Japanese. But in the white countries, um, we have been pushing, and that's primarily the globalists, have been pushing diversity and multiculturalism so much that the white people are just pu pushed out and they have no country anymore. So I think that the concept of a white ethno state is a valid one. I think that maybe the Pace Amendment that you just quoted um, is no longer practical. Uh, and my final question, uh, as somebody who's biracial, so like who wouldn't exist without interracial marriage, um, you think of white nationalism and you think of, or like white rights, or I mean, I know the American Freedom Party isn't necessarily a white nationalist group, but um, you know, when you hear that stuff, it strikes fear into people like me because like you think of the Ku Klux Klan, you think of cross burning. Um, is your group or your views something that somebody like me who is a double minority, half Hispanic, half black, uh, should be feared of? Should they, should, I mean, should they fear it? So they fear those yeah, no, no, not at all. And I think the stereotype that you're ta talking about is really, by and large, uh, hollow, uh, uh, generated by Hollywood. Um, I've, I've been in this movement for 30 some years, and I've never met anyone that is um, violent prone at all. We all want peaceful change, and we all have a good heart, a good spirit. And what we promote, I think, we think is just, proper, and moral. And so we don't want to do anything that would cause harm to any other people. Like when I passed, uh, when I promoted the Pace Amendment, my office got bombed. You know? And then when I would go speak, um, there, were, there were people that were actually trying to get to me to kill me. And government officials, elected government officials, have tried to have me charged with sedition, which carried a life imprisonment. And they also tried to get me, um, one, one elected governor of, of Glendale, California, said that I should be executed. So I think that all of the, the fear should be, me should be fearful, not you being fearful. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, you can check out my most recent episode over here, which discusses uh, student debt. It's the second part of a two-part mini-series on the issue. 
a completely different topic. Uh, if you like what I do on this channel or in this video in particular, um, you can go ahead and subscribe or you can call me a racist. Um, I'm sure if somebody thinks that. In general, positive or negative, I, you know, I would just like somebody to watch my videos.